So you were playing a hand at the lodge, right? Yeah, it was uh, full ring two five match the stack at the lodge. Okay, so two two five, right? Two five match match the stack. Mm-hmm. Okay, so which is in essence uncapped, right? In essence, yeah. Yep, yep. Okay. And I had just transferred. I was uh, I was kind of following Brad Owen around in a non creepy way, and uh, <laughs> he he had just transferred to the two five, and we were playing one three together. And I went there, and I just sat down with my stack and did not have a chance to. Uh, to match, which I plan on doing, which may be good or bad depending on how the hand. Okay, so hand so how deep are you? I am eight hundred deep, and the uh, so I'm the effective stack, and the villain is right around one point three k. Okay. So I just sit down. I'm actually putting my rack on the table under the gun, and um, I'm about to match the stack, but I'm dealt cards. So I look down at nine of clubs, nine of hearts, and raise to twenty. Under the gun. Under the gun. Yep. Okay. A uh, bunch of folds and the button three bets to 70. And I call. Not Brad Owen. Not Brad. Brad Owen folded from the cutoff because he's every time I raise, <laughs> every time I raise uh, uh, when he's at the table, he immediately snap folds because he, he's a baby. So hero under the gun with nine, nine to 20, probably standard size open button three bets to 70. Hero calls. Pot's probably just under 150. I'm going to put it up as 150. And you guys are 800 effective. Okay. That's right. And I, I don't know. I just sat down, but I pretty much, I've been at the lodge for a, few, uh, a little bit and I seemed like 15 to 20 was the standard. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the flop is queen of hearts, seven of spades, nine of diamonds. Middle set, uh, middle set, right? Right. Okay. So I check and by the way, checks back. By the way, too, before you tell me what's going to happen here, in our last call, I interjected and gave an anecdote about the hand of Brad, the Brandon Steven Antonio Esfandieri hand on the double flush draw board. If anybody saw me do Hustler Casino Live, the hand slow poker is going to talk about here is going to remind me of that hand with MM versus uh, Ben with the double gut shot, Jack 10 and MM turning a set of Queens, which I'll probably put up as a video. I don't know if you're familiar with that slow poker, but we'll, I saw that. That was okay. Okay. Yeah. So this one, I, can this I one's... spoil it? I mean, I couldn't believe the river. Well, action. I mean, why you understand why I'm bringing that up though with your hand, oh, right? I, I yeah. Do. I yeah. All right. Do. So, so the flop is queen seven, nine, uh, rainbow. Okay. And it goes check, check. Is that right? Yeah. I was surprised that, that, uh, button checked back. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, a little concerned, but uh, anyway, uh, so concerned, like that he might have queen queen or something. I've been sandbagged. I've, I'm in this mode now where I just always think everyone's sandbagging me because I just I've lost so many times with pocket aces over the last several sessions where just everyone flops it and and it's always rainbow and they're sandbagging me and you know you don't want to be afraid of monsters, uh, but but yeah, I was a little a little afraid, but. But anyway, I wasn't but, I wasn't too scared. But by the scared. way, somebody asked what is effective stack in the chat as a non troll do slow poker is using this correctly. The easiest way to think about effective stack is the smallest relevant stack in the hand, because when you're playing no limit cash, it doesn't matter that slow poker's opponent has 2000 if he only has 800, 800 is in play. So it's kind of an inside joke on this channel because a lot of people will call in and use effective stack incorrectly when it's quite a simple concept. But Slow poker's got middle set and it's queen seven nine and it goes check check in a three bet pot. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, the turn uh, is the queen of spades. So you've got a full house now, and I I would think that you're no longer concerned all that much about what would now be four queens, right? Because you'd have to check back a set of queens, and now there's only one combo, right? Right. Yep. Okay. And uh, I I check. Um, and I'd be curious to know if you, if you would okay. lead here, but I, I checked just assu- assuming maybe, maybe a, a raise was, uh, that was coming. But anyway, I, he, he did check back again. So, and I, so it goes check, check. So, yeah. You know, somebody, someone in the live chat, I think it was T Krupta who usually has some pretty good, uh, stuff about hands, some pretty good analysis had said that the flop should be a check call. I was kind of thinking about that before you even said it went check, check. And I was like, you know, a board like this 
I can see a lot more check calls on other types of boards, like a you know queen deuce threes, things that wouldn't change. This one would probably be pretty close. The turn play is interesting. There, there's a couple of different ways that I would look at this. Number one, if he is checking a lot of his range post flop on this flop, meaning that he does have some over pairs and maybe he's got some queen x, you know, the board is not like it's queen deuce three. He might have some checks um, behind here. It's not super connected. If you check here again, I would tend to think that all hands that were pot control value on flop would bet turn, whether it be a queen or an over pair. I just don't think that an over pair is checking through here again, if he is playing something like that. Maybe even jacks and tens, right? Jacks and tens that check back flop. They're probably not going to check the turn once you check again. On the flip side, though, if he does have like an ace high type of hand here, he's most likely going to continue to check it through, whereas you might get the uh, bluff catching call on the turn here. You get the bluff catching call on the turn and then possibly get the bluff catching call on the river. So I think that when somebody might take like a marginal type of hand like jacks and tens and possibly just bet them and then fold to a check raise, I would tend to play this as a bet bet because anytime the board is paired, it gives you less combos and people are going to be more curious to bluff catch. Whereas if he's got like ace king here, I think you might get your value now. Uh, whereas if he just goes check check again and the river is like a, a six or, you know, an eight or a five and you put out a modest bet, I don't know if he's going to. I don't know if he can call the river because he's got the primary ace high. It's a three bet pot, right? He's got the primary ace high hand, which means less likely that you have it. All five cards are out. It's just more likely that you're paired up. So you might get a hero call now um, versus a hero call on the river. So I'm I'm looking at targeting sort of the weaker part of his value here. Um, you know, with that being said, whereas checking is trying to build the pot up but still, you could go bet, bet, and still get two streets. I think I would tend to want to bet here more often than check. But I can see the reasoning for checking. If I was deeper, I might go for the home run and go for a check raise for those reasons. Well, but you're not that deep. so Right. I was, I was hoping, out of position, I was hoping for the check raise. Both. Right, right. Yeah. Well, uh, if it, I'm, when you say bet, bet, by the way, I, I don't mean to state the obvious, but I'm assuming you mean... Turn river, not that I should bet. I should lead flop. Yeah, bet bet turn river as played right. through here. Right. That's. I'm just making sure. Yeah. <laughs> so it might I figure be, my my check on the flop is is standard. But yeah, the, yeah, of course. Was, so it might be yeah. a, a function of me if I was a little bit deeper, actually going for the check raise here, um, as opposed to here. But it, you know, I, I it's just a couple of different options. Okay, so it goes check check. Yeah, and again, I wanted that. I wanted the check raise opportunity, but he he, you know. He always check back. So yeah, it goes check, check. And um, the river is the eight of spades. So the backdoor flush gets in. So this is exactly what I'm talking about here, right? So like, say, for example, he had ace king or some sort of, if you bet the river now, it, I just, he can't really call with ace king, right? But he might be able to call on the turn. Right. So you, know you think that, that le leading on the turn was my best chance for value or my, my, I, I just my think that you're my one chance for value. Well, I just think that you're going to get value from hands that won't call you on the river. And you'll also get value from all those hands that are like, I might, what I might do, especially if it was a, now I think that you'd probably be forced to do something different here, especially on the eight of spades. But if it was queen of spades and then brick, I would probably have bet one third to half on turn. And then if it was a brick, I probably would have bet full pot at the end because at that point you're still going to get all the calls from the hands that pot controlled. You might even get hero looked up once in a great while versus ace high, but I'm not overly concerned about the ace high on this run out. You probably can't do that. You're going to have to vary your sizing on the river with probably like a block type of sizing just because everything gets there and you might see some hero folds in some given scenarios. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's kind of, you know, I would probably have gone one third to one half and then pray for a break and just bomb away at the end. Um, but obviously, and, and here, 
you know, it's just one of these things where now how do you size? I mean, he's played the hand like he just doesn't have much, but obviously you have to bet here, right? There's no reason to think yeah. that it's going to get checked, through, you know, that he's going to bet. Yeah, and I was thinking maybe I, – I, it was hard to put him on anything. I mean, obviously – I mean, I was looking at – I have my eye on Jack-10 suited, but, you know, I was kept thinking about what you talk about with this sort of um, three-bet – when you're three-betting from the button against another the gun open, just what kind of hands – you know, what kind of range of hands that would look like. But uh, yeah, so I, I, I led uh, River for 90. Okay, so Hero bets 90. I, I Honestly, I might even think that it might even be smaller than that. I might even go like 50 to 75 as a block. I just, I don't know. I mean, you're probably trying to target like jacks and tens here. Um, and maybe you're trying to induce some sort of weird, weird ass play or something like that. But okay. I mean, it's not egregious. I'm just saying I might size a little bit smaller. So you go 90. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I kind of figured it was maybe that's, that's too high for a crying call, but maybe he thought I was just getting bluffy. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But, um, I, again, I just sat down so he doesn't know my style. Mm -hmm. Um, and then something a little surprising happened. Button raises to 425. So he raises to 425. You only started with 800. So, you know, after your call, because you didn't really put any money. I mean, you started the hand post up with 730. So it looks like if you were to call, you'd only have 300 back, right? Something like that. Just about something like that. Yep. I mean, I didn't even realize that you were this shallow. First of all, as played, I think it's an absolute no-brainer shove here with 300 behind. I mean, there's many things going on here, too, and another concept that I talk about in Crush Light Poker, which is reverse pot odds, where he's going to be getting an incredible price, an absolutely incredible price coming back over the top, right? Like, it's going to be like 1,200, 300 for him to call. But I gotta be honest with you, though, even if you had 2,000 here, I don't think there's really any question here that this is definitely a jam because... I can see him having spades here that might raise that can't get away from it. But even if you were 1,500 deep, even if you were 2,000 deep, I would still be very, very comfortable three-betting the river here. Because what are you losing to? Right. And so, obviously, well, I, I would say this. What, depending on the player, you know, like this is not a player who's going to overvalue the nut flush or obviously not trips or the straight. But I just, I could not. And this is going to sound so scaredy cat, but I just could not put him on anything but quads. Like I, did, I couldn't see. And obviously, but the, I mean, why, why can't he have, why can't he have why can't he have backdoor spades? But if he's backdoor spades, is he not worried that I was sandbagging with with some sort of boat? You mean you're just scared of the you're scared of the raise size is so large? You mean at the it end, it just seems it just seems like what could he possibly be so confident that where that he's ahead with? all the boats out there the sandbag boats i mean there are i mean aren't there going to be aren't there going to be boats out there anytime the board is paired aren't they're going to they're going to be all kinds of boats i mean maybe to a lesser extent if there are low cards but any hand that you might be opening and calling defending with a pocket pair there's going to be multiple boats right um the only time you're not going to have boats is when it's probably an ace or a king because you would have three bet you know pre-flop but I could definitely, definitely see somebody possibly playing backdoor spades, you know, in this manner like that. It's just, um, I think at these stack sizes, for sure. Now, do you lose to queen nine? Sure, you lose to queen nine. Again, you know, you can look at the suits. The queen of hearts is out there. The queen of spades is out there. The nine of diamonds is out there. You have the nine of clubs. There's no queen nine suited. Sometimes. Right, and I looked. I thought I sat and like stared at the board. And first of all, this is I. I just made absolutely sure there was no straight flush. And what about uh, what if and... what if he had pocket eights? <laughs> what if he had eight eight? Right, and I, I guess, I didn't look at eight eight because I just thought that was a little maybe right on the borderline for a, a pre flop three bet for you know, especially for you know button against under the gun. But I wasn't really looking at that. And also, too, Mister Slow Poker it's only 300 more. So, <laughs> right, right. so, so no, no, I'm serious. But so there can be cases where you can be very, very deep and be like, well, if I don't think he's going to raise call with his backdoor flushes that he didn't bet off on the turn, I might make a super, super nitty just call. But that's not going to be the case here. He's going to be getting like, he's going to be getting an incredible price when you come back over the top 
right? I mean, the pod is going to be, um, well, you can you put in eight, and you have what, like three, three left. So it's going to be like twelve, three for him to call. Thirteen, like like twelve fifty, three for three fifty for him to call, something like yeah, that. Yeah, he's not folding. Whatever he's got, he's yeah. Not folding. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So this is just a no-brainer shove. I just think that it's more it's interesting if you were deeper. And again, the hands that he can have are spades, backdoor spades, pocket eights, and then if he's got the one combo of quad queens, so be it. Now, what I was talking to Slow Poker about, again, one of the probably the most interesting hand, if not the second most interesting hand that I ended up commentating on besides the one with the Brandon Steven and Antonio with the two queen straights that should have been way bigger was when double M had pocket queens, bet a king nine seven flop, Ben had called out of the blind. I'll, I'll write it up here so people can kind of visualize this. This was like from the first, I want to say the first half an hour of the show uh, on on Friday. So it was queen queen versus jack 10. Queen queen had raised preflop, jack 10 called. Queen, queen, there are two hearts out there. Queen, queen, C-bet the flop. And Jack-10 raised with a gut double gutter. And queen, queen called. And the turn was a queen, a black queen. And Jack-10 overbet the turn, made the straight, overbet the turn. And double M just called with queen, queen. And then the river was a king. So it was king, nine, seven, queen, king. Jack-10 bet again. And queen, queen just called, just snap called, like without a second thought. And I was just flabbergasted because, yeah, he loses to like kings up, like he loses to like king nine. I don't know if Ben is playing like king seven off, but it just seems weird as you roll the hand back. I don't know if king nine is taking over bet sizing on the turn or king seven is taking over bet sizing on the turn. He beats pocket nines. He beats pocket sevens. And uh, he beats Jack-10. So here I look at your hand here where it's like you beat a lot of these other hands. So I think it's a no-brainer. Jam, did you just call? Slow? I, I debated it. And that sounds so ridiculous. And I, I, I'm i honestly, I think I'm just shell-shocked from all the bad beats I've taken. And I just thought, I couldn't I couldn't imagine anything but quads. And that's one combination, obviously. And how could I be afraid of quads? But I, and, and I also thought, you know, he's a capable player. Like at some point, maybe not flop, but at turn, he's got to start, if he's got quads, start building some kind of pot, right? So would he really be waiting for value until the, of course I was doing that, <laughs> but I was out of position. So I, yeah, I, yeah, I debated. I, I had this really weird psychological kind of conversation with myself, which is just like, if I think it's quads, then I'm not, I'm not going to fold, right? If it's quads, I call, I'm either calling or shoving, but I just didn't, but I thought if I think it's by the wise, way, then why am I shoving? By the way, why did you, why did you think of me while you're in the hand, as you said in the email? Oh, <laughs> right. So, uh, as I'm thinking about, I'm sitting there tanking, you know, with the boat and over, over the hijack shoulder, I just directly look at Bart's face. Cause there's a, a, a sort of Bart Hansen meetup games poster on the wall. It was just really creepy. Oh, so well, I was just like, we'll try to splice this in for the YouTube video, but if anyone's ever been in the lodge, of course, like I'm one of the guys that's up on the wall. So when slow poker puts his vlog up, he's literally his opponent above his opponent's shoulder is me about yeah. right, right above his shoulder. <laughs> From the so wall. I, I was sitting there tanking, going through the combinations that could beat me and thinking, I got to tell that guy on the wall about this hand once I get home. So what ended up happening? I did. I did shove. I did okay. shove. Okay. And he snapped, and he snapped it off. Okay. And? Pocket eights. So you won, so you won right? I did win, but I, but when he snapped it off, I, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm just, I asked you the question. I was kind of fascinated by this hand because I thought, if I if I think that pocket queens is the only hand to play this way, then is it just is it ever just a call, or is that just absurd? You know, fear of one combination of you know of one <laughs> the only pocket queens. I, I think that yeah, you're. I mean, he of course he snapped it off. I'm sorry, I'm just brainstorming here about the uh, thumbnail that I'm going to use for this video. Still scared after. I mean, that's, I by won. the way, side note that's a that that river is you know. <laughs> really cruel that was just so nasty i felt so awful but that was just disgusting <laughs> i mean the better hand the better preflop hand won so i feel fine but that that's just just that's just no no respect for humanity river that was bad i, I think you're overthinking it man i mean like i said like this <laughs> he's gonna snap call because he beat spades here too right yeah but exactly. um no i appreciate the call thank you very much thanks bart